my oh my. So two weeks ago, I made a video on a platform called Kujira. It lets you take part of liquidations. Specifically, you want to get your hands on some discounted Luna. Well, here you go. Take part. You got a chance. Well, in that video that I made, I was successful. I got a few B Luna out of it. Well, last night, I managed to get that much more during this really nice dip that we saw. So we're going to go a bit deeper into Kujira, share some of the thoughts. Maybe we can discuss some strategies that I have in mind. But before we get into that, the intro, welcome to Crypto Saver. So first things first, let's take a look at the Beluna that I managed to grab through Kujira. And as we look on the website, we can see that I have 2818 B Luna available for withdrawal, and this all came in last night. Well, last night, at least in my time zone, I'm currently located in uh, in Western Europe. And you can kind of see if we go down to my bids, I had bids at 5%, at 7%, at 7%, everything got filled. And you can see that the majority of my B Luna that came in, almost 21 B Luna came in at the 7% mark. I mean, it's beautiful. And my average discount is at 6.86%. And soon in this video, we're going to take how much I actually had bid in that process and actually translate and see what I ended up buying this B-Luna for. And you're going to be surprised because, hell, I was really happy about the results once I once I did the math myself. But for those of you that haven't watched my previous video, which, again, I recommend that you do because I really go in-depth into Kajira. I'll try to give a quick 30-second explanation here. You come over to the platform, you bid on the premium amount and your bid amount. Now, the more premium you're asking for, the less likely you are to be filled on a liquidation because liquidations are filled based on people that are bidding less of a premium. So those that bid 1% will get filled before those who get who bid 2% and so on. The bid amount is simply the amount of money you're looking to basically exchange for B Luna. And the simplest way to kind of look at it is if you're putting down 100 UST for a 10% premium, well, if you're successful and you are filled in a liquidation where while your 100 UST turns into $100 worth of B Luna in that moment, plus you get 10% extra B Luna in that moment as well. So that's how that premium works in. And where this all comes from, it comes from the actual borrower. So whoever lent, whoever basically used their B Luna as collateral to borrow UST, well, if they're getting kicked out of their borrow position, by Anchor. Anchor is the one that's usually giving this loan for B Luna. Well, we're basically giving Anchor the UST that they loaned out to that person. And in return for helping facilitate this transaction, the closure of it, uh, we get a chunk of the collateral, right? A little extra on top. So yes, the person that does borrow the money, the 10% that we gain is actually 10% that they lose out of their pocket. So that's just one thing to know. But since we covered that, again, look at the other video if you want a more in-depth introduction into Kujira. Let's look at what Luna was doing last night and why I decided to put a bit more money into it. So for the last couple of days, we've seen an astronomical move on Luna. I mean, and this is without Bitcoin really doing much. Like just out of the blue, we just started to see the price moving up day over day. I mean, I'm just going to look at the price range here so we can kind of see what we're looking at. I mean... We're going to have to try to avoid this dip. This was up to yesterday. So we saw an 85% move. And I believe this happened in eight days. So in eight days, Luna managed to go up 85%. I mean, absolutely. You know, it, it's incredible. And if we go to smartstake.io, I recommend you guys bookmark this platform. We can kind of see what the UST supply changes have been for the last week or so. So we can kind of tell you November 9th, Huge supply in UST, which if you've, if you've been paying attention to the market cap of UST, you've been seeing it going all the way up the charts. I mean, like a month ago, I think it was like the 60th biggest crypto or something. But nowadays, it's already in the 20s, maybe late 20s or so. Um, why? Well, this UST supply actually came from the Columbus uh, 5 burning that occurred. Like we had a huge community pool of, of Luna and essentially... Uh, a lot of it was burned to instead mint UST. And that caused this humongous influx of, of, of UST into, into the market, which the thing is, this did not really help Luna out because 
the Luna that was burned within this community pool, it was actually out of circulation. So it would not really have an effect on the supply and demand of Luna in the open market because it was out of circulation. It's one thing to keep in mind, right? But as we move on, notice that the burn goes on for about, it was about 10 days or so, right? You can kind of see withering down. And then we kind of come to a slower period, November 21 and so, but then all of a sudden on the 25th, UST supply starts going up. There's all of a sudden there's a big demand for UST. And there's some rumors as to what it could be. I think some people might have said that Binance is looking to actually um, add native UST to their platform possibly. Again, don't quote me on that. But some people are theorizing as to what could be leading to this demand for USD because it is very, you know, it, it is pretty clear. Unfortunately, here I can't really go back and show you what it would typically look like because we kind of have this Columbus burning that's occurring. Actually, on a weekly scale, we can kind of see. Yeah, so on a weekly, this is kind of the weekly chart here, but we can kind of see this section here was a Columbus burning and um, the demand for USD is definitely higher than what it was. I mean, just Okay, actually forget about everything that I just said because this is actually a daily chart here. So we can't really see that here. But either way, we've been seeing Luna just climbing out of its mind and still climbing as we speak. Now, it doesn't take a genius to understand that it's going to pull back, right? It's going to pull back. And I, I had a bit more USD in my wallet. I did want to buy Luna, but I did see going to, you know, 60, 65, it was a 67 yesterday. And I just couldn't pull the trigger because again, like, you know, when it goes parabolic like that, it ultimately it's going to pull back. So instead, I took that money and I deposited it into Kujira. And luckily enough, as I did that, we'll just go back to the minute chart here. Um, yesterday was a relatively rough day for the markets because it wasn't just the crypto markets. It was also the, the equities market, right? Stock market was down big and I think the cryptos began to trade lower. Um, throughout the day. And I think overnight, at least for me, I think it just really collapsed at this point. And we're going to look at a few screenshots because I kind of want to ex explain what I was seeing of Kujira. So here's a screenshot that we're looking at. And you can kind of see my bids down here below. I have a $1,000 bid at 7%. That was my, the most recent one I had put on. I had 250 and I had a 93. Notice the 93. That is because I actually had this bid on for about two weeks or so. And I had a partial fill of 0.14. B Luna just sitting there at a 5% premium. So not much, but it was still open there. And you can kind of see also what where all the bids were. And more importantly, if you look below here on the executions, which I will click off and go back to Kujira. This basically tells you how many times this pool has been emptied altogether. Now, the reason why this statistic is important to you is because when, let's say all these, let's say all the pools up to 10% have just now been emptied, right? And there's no UST there. If there's more liquidations occurring right now, well, the people, the bids within the 10% now finally have their turn, right, to be utilized. Well, if let's say a thousand, let's say a thousand UST is needed right this moment, the system does not like cherry pick one bidder out of that whole ten percent pool as the person that's going to liquidate. They will actually take that, let's say, what did I say, a thousand or ten thousand, that one thousand demand of UST that's needed for a contract, and they'll actually take it out of all the bidders within this pool. So everyone gets a small chunk of a fill in that case. But when we see that the pool has been emptied two times. This would be the 10% mark that actually tells us that everybody, no matter how big the bids were there, everybody got their bids completely filled out. So naturally, as we look below, we can kind of see how the 1% the, the percenters and the 2% and the 3%, I mean, they've been emptied out a lot. And uh, I mean, Kajira, I think, has been pretty active now for the last month or so. Um, I know when I first joined up and I made me, when I was preparing my first video here, there wasn't even that much data here. Um, to begin with, but now it's really coming in as as we do see more liquidations. Now, something I want you, two things I want you to keep in mind as we go back to the screenshot here. Notice how there was there, there was never any actual full liquidations above the eight percent mark, right? But if we go to it right now, we have we have full liquidations going up all the way to twelve percent. What does that mean? Well, yesterday, had you put a bid down. At the 12% premium mark, you would have gotten filled. 
you would have gotten filled. I mean, look, at this point, at the 12% mark, we had over 5 million UST sitting there, okay? 5 million UST got filled at the 12% mark, right? I mean, I got filled at 6.86, so, and I was really happy about too about that too, and we'll do the math how much that comes out to being for me, at what price, but damn, there are people at 12% discounts that were getting filled last night. That's amazing, absolutely amazing. Another thing I wanna mention, notice something here. There's, there's kind of like a 5 million USD in every single pool here, right? You can kind of go up higher and now it actually drops off. And same thing, if we look at yesterday's photo here, it's also at 5 million. Now, as I was looking at Kujira yesterday, and this is when we started seeing some level of, of fall, and notice that this screenshot here was taken when B Luna's at 59, right? So we've basically gone from 69 to 59. I noticed maybe an hour before this, two hours before this, all of a sudden, someone came in and just put 5 million UST bids on all these premiums from like 5% to, as we can see, 14%. Just someone came in, just started putting it in. This wasn't like, you know, this is just a coincidence that everyone's trying to kind of match up about a five to $6 million pool across all these premiums. Because I actually saw it because there's always a recent activity. So I actually saw it come in in one chunks, 5 million, 5 million, one chunks. Unfortunately, I didn't grab a, a screen grab of that when I did see it through. But someone came in and set all these up. And I'm kind of curious as to who did that. I mean, was there a whale just looking to try to capitalize on this drop and try to pick up some more Luna? Or what I really think happened here is maybe someone from the Terraform Labs team understood, hey, there's a really good chance that there's going to be some liquidations coming up right now because Luna especially has rallied so much. So let's actually try to set up a bit more liquidity into Kujira and make sure that the people that do get liquidated they get liquidated for a reasonable cost, right? You don't want, you know, because there's some crazy people out there who are setting up liquidations all the way at 30%, right? I mean, for if we go to be ETH here, it's sometimes even worse. I mean, you got over, you got a million and a half of sitting at 30% for BETH, you know? And granted, obviously, the, the B Loon is considerably greater market than BETH on Terra. So I feel like, yeah, it could have been someone from Terraform Labs team that came in and kind of set up these 5 million bids across 10 different percentiles to just kind of ensure that if there's mass liquidations, you know, a lot of it is going to be soaked up here and you're not going to have people getting, you know, ruined at the 15, 20, 25% mark if they're, you know, you could have came on here and been like, wait a minute, like these pools are dry empty. Why am I going to try to put a 10% bid on? Let me put a 15% bid because there's barely any money in those other pools. And these pools are still fairly full right now. So I feel like, again, they, they, they are getting replenished. And I do think, you know, could beat someone from Terraform Labs, Doquan himself that's coming in here and possibly refilling them. Okay, so let's calculate finally what price did I get filled at, right? So we're gonna be doing this. Um, let's go back to our screen grab we can verify how much my bids were and we will we're going to consider the Luna that was in my wallet already which uh, we paid about something a little over 7 bucks but basically the bids were 1000 plus 250 plus what is that 93.88 um, and I mean, okay, so we're going to basically round this to 1350 because like I said, I, we used some of our Biluna here. So I had 1350 basically riding. And we ended up grabbing 28. Now, that, so that 1350 of, of bids that we've put into their platform now converts to 28. We're going to divide that by 28.182. And that gives us a price of 47.90 per B Luna, okay? Let's look at the charts, 47.90, 47.90. So we're looking at a chart here on TradingView from Binance. Binance basically has the most liquidity. So I feel like it's a fairly fair place to look to see what the bottoms were. So these candles here, the low is at 49.68. And I look in this region here, by the way, as I go over the candle, 49.68 was the low. My fill, well, basically not my fill, but what I was able to get, to get 
what I was able to get this Beluna for was for $47.90. And obviously, it's a lot thanks to that premium discount that I had, that 7%. Because likely, you know, my fill started to come in somewhere, let's say, when, you know, Beluna, when, well, Luna, Beluna, since they should trade one to one, probably was at like 53, 52. Right, maybe 51 down here, and then it triggered off. Honestly, maybe even higher. It's hard to tell because people at the 12% mark were getting filled in a liquidation. So, you know, I mean, which is insane to be honest. But either way, thanks to Kujira, I was able to grab this B Luna for an average cost of 47.90. I mean, again, that's below what you could have gotten if you were at the computer the whole time and then and, and set up a bed. You know, which is just amazing, absolutely amazing. Now, granted. Um, if you want to change it to Luna, you have to convert it, right? So did I, do I still have that number here? We can actually try to do this live. Um, well, let's see. Well, as I discussed in the other video, there's two kind of steps. We can, we can actually convert it through, through Anchor, right? So we can kind of look and see what the... Um, just... Uh, Okay, so we can kind of see what the conversion rate right now is. And I mean, it's pretty tight. It's extremely tight. So yeah, we could very well get it. Actually, that's for burn. Let's look at instant burn, yeah, which makes sense, right? So for burn, again, you'd have to wait 21 days to get that really like tight lipped, you know, spread that we just saw down here. But for instant burn here, um, slippage tolerance. I mean, it's actually not, you know, the thing is we do have to claim it so how about we do that that may make the most sense so let's actually claim this right now finally get this b loon into my wallet i'm gonna post this wow it's absolutely crazy as i'm looking through this i mean i'm looking at the b Luna price it's 73.43 i mean we saw that you know absolute drop yesterday and then right now it's 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 just sitting here making new highs. I mean, it's just so bullish right now. It's just amazing. Absolutely amazing. So I think we were successful in withdrawing it. So right now I'm just bringing up my wallet to see if I can find the B Luna, which is right here. So 2790. Uh, the reason why it's slightly less than what we saw there, because we had about 28 something, right? Is because of that fee you do for Kijiri, you do pay for the fee in B Luna, which I will, uh, bring up right now as a photo. We can kind of see here where the fee was, 0 0.001. Um, actually, oops, that's a mistake. That's the fee before we were successful. The larger, the larger, uh, this would be the screenshot. Yeah, so 0 0.28, I mean, that's just still, you know, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. Um, well, what is it, about a third, right? So of course it's about a third of B Luna. And meanwhile, we're filming this right now, a third of B Luna is around $70, right? So, I mean, this is a, you know, a reasonable cost to just be aware of, obviously. So 70 times say point just three, three is an estimate. So $23 would actually be the fee. But again, I was able to grab this B Luna that we calculated 47.90. But again, that's the B Luna price. That's the B Luna price. Um, what we can do here, we can already adjust for this, right? So we have 2790 B Luna. So again, if we take, again, it's always smart to just consider all these fees. This, this was the amount that I bid all together. We looked at the number before, we're gonna take 1350, divide that by 27.9. So now the average price was about 48.38, and that is with the Kajira fee in mind, right? So still not bad, still below the, the lowest tick that we saw on the chart. Mm -hmm. Now, if we want to take that and convert that over to Luna, yes, we will get dinged on that as well. Now, I'm likely not going to do this right now because I do have some other intentions with B Luna at the moment. So I just don't want to waste uh, losing money on that spread back and forth. But let's go to swap and still get a rough idea for those of you that would be swapping between it. And we can take B Luna. Oops. Help my hands can press, right? So let's take all our B Luna and then let's take Luna. 
and we can kind of get an idea on TerraSwap, what the conversion rate would be here and how much Luna we would expect to get, which would be about 27, 24. So yes, obviously less be Luna. Um, so finally, right, for the last bit of math here, 1350, now we divide that by 27.824. And now finally the average price comes out to about 49.55. So this would include the Biluna cost you would pay to Kujira. And this would also include the amount you would lose instantly swapping your Biluna for Luna if that's what you intend on doing. 49.50. I think at that point it kind of puts us right as to where the low was. Right, um, forty nine fifty. I mean, we're looking at, I mean, these lows. I mean, forty nine sixty eight was the low. I mean, again, it still beats that, right? And it's physically impossible to ever buy the absolute low there. But sure, after all those fees, it's, you you still come out ahead, uh, which is nice. Now, for the diehard Kujira fans out there, they really plan on using this uh, this app here, which, by the way, I recommend always just putting something in whenever you see Luna just going parabolic for a few days. If Luna is up 30%, just throw some money in there because, I mean, look at Anchor here. We can go and see that there was enormous, look at this, look at the last week or two, enormous people, so many people depositing and so many people borrowing just all of a sudden. And now you can kind of see get dinked down, which makes sense. You know, the people on the borrow side got dinked down because they got kicked out of some level of their uh, positions. And naturally, the people that deposited get dinged out because some of them might withdraw their UST, maybe to buy the dip on Luna, right? But anyhow, you see a couple of days of parabolic moves on Luna and you want to buy a bit of Luna? It makes sense. Throw some UST into Kajira, select a 10% mark or something. Now, naturally, keep your eyes on the on the total on the total pool volume here, right? Because the idea is, is with time, if that pool volume really gets bigger and bigger, it's gonna be harder to get filled in the higher premium marks. It's at 47 million right now. Yesterday, it was at 50 something also. And again, I do feel like someone's holding this up right now because I feel like if at that specific person that's throwing in these 5 million bids across the chain here, um, the actual pool values would be, uh, I would say like between five to 10 million, to be honest with you which would be great for those that are, are partaking because then you can get away with like these like 15% fills probably during a bigger crash. But anyhow, if you're really interested in Kujira, cool thing you can do, there's an analytics tab. Now I'm a little too cheap to get into this because you need to stake 200 Kuji, I think that's the name of the token, into an LP. So I think it's a Kuji and UST pool. And once you stake, what was it, 200 of them, you can kind of see the cost right now. One Kuji is 3.3 UST. So you would have to basically spend, I mean, yeah, you would have to buy like $660 worth of Kuji right now, have an extra 660 worth of UST and throw that into this liquidity pool here, somewhere here, yeah. And then you get access to the analytics. And from what I understand, there's two tools here. And they better help you understand where most of people, where people will likely get liquidated. So it kind of looks at the total collateral value of the people on Anchor and how close they are to kind of hitting that specific mark where Anchor would basically mark their contract, their smart contract as being ready for liquidations. I had someone in the Discord kind of share a screenshot of uh, how it looks like. So just give me a second to bring it up. So here's a so so here's a screenshot that we're looking at. Again, I do not have access to this tool, so I'm not really able to read the, the information about it, how to better read it, but it would be something like this. And it would kind of tell you where people's money is falling right now, as in terms of like where the liquidation levels are. I'm guessing this data line kind of tells you that uh Luna's price right now, where it is. So if you'd look at this, you'd kind of understand that there's little amount of liquidation that are occurring, but obviously as the price moves in lower, you would kind of see where there starts to be a lot of people coming at risk of liquidations. But this is a pretty cool tool. And I guess if you really get involved with Kujira, I mean, it makes sense to kind of stake the, the liquidity pool just to get access to it. 
And I think probably the most profitable way to use Kujira is not like I'm doing it, which is just buying the dip. It's basically, I mean, set up an alert. Like once these liquidations occur and you're able to grab, I mean, I was able to grab, let's say, all that B Luna. I think the final price we're looking at was like 49.50 or something after all fees. If you're able to grab it for that much of a discount in that moment, and you kind of saw that like instantly Luna like bounced like, you know, within like 10 minutes from, from here to like 58, I mean, you could have pocketed like $9, right? Per B Luna, like instantly, like within 10 minutes. So I think a lot of people are likely using it in such a way where you just simply take it as an opportunity to get some cheap B Luna, wait for Luna to stabilize for a split second, even the spread to stabilize, because I would guess that during that moment, B Luna might have been off pegged by a lot more than, than Luna itself. So, anyhow, um, that's kind of what I, what I wanted to talk about. Again, I'm really impress, impressed with Kujira here, and I think everybody should be using it. If you see Luna getting euphoric, euphoric, then put some money in. It's not going to hurt. Get greedy. Put something in at 10 12%. I mean, we saw those bits get filled this time around, and I was surprised to see it happen, especially since I did see someone come in and put 5 mil across to try to soften up how quickly we go through those percentages. Other than that, if you enjoyed this video, if you found it helpful, if you like terror-related content, um, give me a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it and subscribe to the channel. If you have any criticism, if you want me to improve on something or you want me to talk about something else in a different way, whatever it might be. Criticism, drop it in the comments. I actually like criticism more than compliments, believe it or not, because criticism I can actually use to improve on the channel. But thank you for listening. Have a great day and stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.